It's really good to see you here. My name is Adrian, and uh, I'll be starting this talk. And then Julian, who is uh, a master of uh, moving things around, <laughs> will do uh, most of the, uh, the rest of the talk here. So, yeah, we're part of the technical evangelist team. We've been actually going around the Nordics, the UK, to do those talks. Uh, and the first talk is really first to have an overview of what's going on uh, inside Amazon, inside of AWS, the kind of service that you can you can use. And then, so this is kind of 100 to 100 level. And then after that, Julian takes care of the dark side, right? Taking you very deep, 300 and 400, even goes to 600 levels at some point. This is when you can throw him some some shoes so that he stops. He'll go too deep otherwise. All right, cool. So this track is sponsored by Intel. Uh, Intel works a lot with us, so it's very important that uh, we, we do recognize that. And throughout the, the day, you'll see some of the work we do with Intel as well. Uh, this is the agenda, but you'll see later. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Amazon AI and why we're here today. So we've been working at Amazon about 20 years related to, uh, to AI. And in fact, it just the AI by itself is almost 70-year-old technology, right? Uh, it's been talked in the early 1950s. Uh, but really, AI and, and, and the rise of cloud computing is really a match made in heaven. Uh, and for us at Amazon, we've used AI for a bunch of stuff, right? Be at the beginning, when we were only a bookstore and we started to have about a million copies in the website, it was very important for our customers to figure out how to find the right book, right? Uh, and when you have a million copies, you don't want your customers to spend too much time figuring out what, what is there. So of course, recommendation engines were very, very important. So this is kind of the first try of machine learning. And nowadays, the website is filled with AI, a machine learning algorithm that finds your recommendation, what people buy, and all this kind of stuff. Right? And in fact, all these uh, kind of microservices that figure out things for, for the customers. And if you're interested into recommendation engines, I really recommend to have a look at this paper. It's a white paper that we released a few, uh, few months ago about recommendation, recommended systems at Amazon. It's a fascinating paper. And then, of course, the fulfillment centers. Uh, so those fulfillment centers, they are filled with robots, about 50,000 of those uh, per uh, per fulfillment centers, and they are filled with, of course, machine learning uh, algorithm. And as you can imagine, when there are 50,000 of those, most of the algorithm are collision avoidance algorithm, <laughs> so that they don't bunch into, uh, bump into each other. And they are helping figure out how to uh, best organize the fulfillment centers so that when a customer puts an order, uh, they can uh, move it around very fast. And in fact, the fulfillment centers are reorganized very often depending on what customers are suddenly interested in. Right? So we put uh, the robots are reorganizing the fulfillment centers with things that people buy regularly. And these are tied into, of course, the recommendation systems inside Amazon so that uh, per region so that we know where to put things around. Then you probably heard about Alexa as well. Uh, this is. Uh, becoming quite common. And of course, this is our uh, conversational interface system. And in fact, people are saying that conversational interface will be becoming very, very popular. Um, so we've been working with this, of course. And then we started to experiment with a technology uh, called drones <laughs> that most of you know. But these are autonomous drones. In fact, they have the same autonomous driving systems that are running inside the cars and somehow somewhat similar what are they in the robots. It's also about collision avoidance. Right? It's about understanding what's in the air and how to deliver package, especially last mile package. And there are no pilots. It's totally 100% autonomous. It's not. Uh, there's no, no one in the fulfillment center trying to move this around. It's really, we give it a destination, and then the system flies with live cameras and try to avoid uh, and uh, everything that it finds in the air and uh, then deliver the packets. And then you probably heard as well, we finally uh, opened uh, the last what we call the Amazon Go store, which was an experiment. And which is, is still pretty much an experiment, but now it's, uh, it's open to public. It's a store where you can just enter, and the 
the roof or the ceiling of the, the store is covered with cameras and the shop is filled with sensors. And we combine those two technologies to allow a customer experience that you just come in, pick up your food, and then leave. There's no cashers, nothing. And the system will just send you a bill once you leave the, uh, the, the store. And this is you know, entirely powered by AI. So we track people, we look what they're doing, and what they take, what they put in bags, and then we charge you for that. So you can imagine doing all those. Uh, the simple reason is increasing or make her making a better customer experience. All those technologies have been really cool uh, now, and we are, or our mission is to use this technology and put in the hands of our customers. So that means you. Uh, so we've done a couple of stuff regarding uh, our uh, machine learning and AI technology. And we separate them in three levels. Right? We uh, expose what we call the API services, which, as it, its name <laughs> implies, it's an API call that you make and you can access services that are AI powered. And then you can, uh, you can go uh, down the rabbit hole. Uh, first on the platform and then, of course, on the infrastructure level. And this is where you want, for example, uh, if you have data scientists in-house or people that are really into ML, uh, to build things themselves. Right? So we're going to go through a bunch of those. What are the application services? What are the platform services? And then, of course, the infrastructure. And this is really to give you an overview of, of AI. And there are plenty, plenty of customers. Throughout the day, you'll see references that we use about our customers, uh, how they use AI to power their services. Right? So let's take a look first at the uh, AI services that are powered. And this is usually one, uh, one line of code to call um, for the service. And the first one is, is recognition. This is a service that was launched two years ago initially just to do image recognition. And now we uh, added video recognition. So you can give it an image or a video, and then it will return uh, you uh, the objects and scenes that it detects in the videos or in the picture. The the face recognition, do some comparison, even able to recognize celebrity, and find text in image as well. Right. And how it works is you give it an image, and then it will return you a list of tags, uh, and then a confident index. And this is the confidence that we think that object is actually in the scene. This is uh, uh, usually a JSON object, and this is just not represented as a table. And the same for facial analysis. So what it does, it returns you a bunch of features. And it also returns you uh, the bounding box for the face so that you can have the position of the eyes, of the nose, the mouth, uh, the external parts, so that you can do uh, OpenCV uh, kind of uh, technology on top of it and do some, uh, some overlay on your images. And we recently added uh, crowd <laughs> face detection. This is me in, uh, in India, in Bangalore. That was awesome, by the way. Uh, uh, initially, when we uh, when we and I didn't get the belly, uh, uh, deli belly, so I didn't get sick in one week, which is a miracle I've heard. Uh, so, anyway, the, we launched uh, when we launched initially recognition. There were you could get only ten faces in, in the image. Now we support crowd mode face. And if you see, this is taken actually an image from my iPhone. Uh, this iPhone, which is totally broken, and I've, I'm still holding on to it. And really, the image quality is quite bad. And you can see it still managed to pick quite a, a few faces. Interestingly, of course, there's some, some misses and stuff like this. But uh, I think it's still uh, pretty, pretty decent. Um, one important feature of, uh, uh, of recognition is that you can support collections. So you can uh, tag your own images with uh, names of people in that you uh, you want, so your own collection. This is your private collection, and then you can do facial search. Right? So you can also uh, you can send uh, uh, make a collection of your friends, and then you can uh, make uh, a request for other pictures, and we'll tell you if this image is already uh, uh, in your collection. And we also support what we call facial search. So if you give two different images, we can tell you. Uh, the percentage, uh, the correlation between the faces, and uh, the similarity index between those faces. And this is very good if you want to do, for example, uh, face, uh, face recognition. And we launched uh, reInvent text and image. This is, was one of the most 
as feature from our customers, being able to recognize text and images. Right? So in that case, we also return the bounding box uh, for each of the different text or words that we see in the image. So if you would have several uh, text, we would return several bounding box with the letters so that you can, again, do some overlay, similarly what you would do with a face. And there's also image moderation, so that if you need to have a system that prevents uh, your customers to upload nudity image, you can uh, use moderation uh, to give you a uh, nudity index. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Why is it funny? <laughs> Uh, we also support celebrity recognition. I love uh, uh, Wonder Woman, um, so I had to use uh, uh, Gal Gal, but uh, uh, this is pretty cool. And as I say, it's super easy to use. Uh, it's one line of code. As you can see here, I launched the recognition detect labels with a reference to an image that is stored into my S3 bucket. Uh, and then the system returns a uh, JSON object with, as I said, the tags and then the confidence index for each of those uh, features that I recognize. And similar for the faces, here you see we return the bounding box and then the landmarks within the face. All right. um, and this, this uh, technology has been very, very uh, useful. And a customer called Marinus Analytics has uh, started to use it for uh, uh, trying to prevent human trafficking. And what they do, they use collections of images where they index people or uh, that have been missing or that have been involved in human trafficking, and then they uh, search uh, people in the crowds. Uh, and they've already managed to identify uh, victims in several seconds, which is pretty cool. Uh, I want to show you some demos, of course. So this is the recognition console. And this is the video one, so I've uploaded uh, 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 a video called Nature, and this is the video. I'll show you quickly. There's going to be some sound, my friends, at the <laughs> there. Oh, cool, and it, and it's cool. I can talk over that. And um, what it does is uh, it returns a, a very similarly to the image. It returns a list of uh, celebrities, people, or objects and activities that it sees in the image. And you can see, for example, all the areas where it finds nature or uh, ocean or uh, you see uh, fire that's going to be at the end. So if we want to see fire, for example, so that you can really uh, detect in the image very fast where, where the things have been. So this works very similarly to the image. Uh, you give the video. It's an asynchronous process, so it's not returning uh, right away. It gives you a job ID, and then you can uh, query that job ID later. And there's a JSON object with the tag and the position in the film, uh, so that you can then associate and do similar uh, very uh, cool interface. And you see, you found also one, pap one person here. If I remove the, the tags, one person that was found here. and. Uh, Considering the quality of the image, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting here. And of course, there's a lot of different tags. Uh, as I say, if you just want to focus on waterfalls, if you're a waterfall person, then that's, that tool is for you, my friend. <laughs> uh, uh, image moderation, uh, this, this is the video one, but then recognition for image. As I say, you can also uh, uh, test the stuff here. So uh, you can do you know, text in image, for example. I'll see here. This is an image that is it's Monday, but keep smiling. Uh, the response in JSON is uh, is quite interesting as well. So you can see the bounding box, for example, for the different uh, objects here. So if I want to focus here on Monday, you would have uh, your bounding box that is yeah detected here. Anyway, very interesting uh, thing if you want to add very very fast uh, some capability to do image recognition in your system. Uh, Words of, uh, of caution, it's trained on general for pr general purpose uh, uh, systems. So if you want to uh, customize that, you can't. Uh, and this is where we're going to go slower down the rabbit hole and show you how to do this throughout the day. Uh, I'll just demo that. If you want to see a little bit, uh, recognition also does actually very interestingly. Uh, human, uh, you can follow so motion uh, detection, so you can uh, track those objects and people inside the images. Right? As I say here, this is video uh, uh, recognition doing, doing some stuff on the cameras. And, and people have started to use, customers have started to use, uh, of course, that. 
as I say, this is the API, very simple. City of London uh, started to use recognition video to understand what's happening in real time uh, in their uh, in their city uh, to improve the the, the city life uh, and find uh, persons of interest or or increase public safety. All right. Uh, the second service, which was launched about two years ago, is Amazon Poly. Amazon Poly is text to uh, a speech synthesizer. Uh, it's not the stupid text uh, synthesizer. It really tries to understand from the uh, the context of the of the sentence uh, what is happening. What's the difference between a hippo and a zippo? One is really heavy, and the other is a little lighter. Right. It's actually very good at telling jokes as well, apparently. Um, so uh, Poly supports a bunch of languages, I think 12 or 13, and we're increasing the number of languages. But it supports also the uh, SSML, which is the uh, markup language, so that you can alter parts of the text. And if there are numbers, you can tell the text or Poly to not say the number, let's say a phone number, for example. You wouldn't want Poly to say, my phone number is 1,677,000. Uh, you want to say 17, so you want to spell. And you can do this with the SSML markup language. And in that case, I'm telling uh, uh, Poly to just slow down uh, when it pronounces the 45. Oh, sorry, I want to hear you to hear. The price of this book is 45 euros. Right. So you can make some really stupid uh, sound if you want. The API is very, uh, very simple as well. Uh, you give the text uh, directly in the string, or you can also uh, pass a file which has the text as a reference. And then this is synchronous, so it will return right away uh, your MP3 file. And the good thing that this MP3 MP3 file uh, is your own, so uh, you can download it and use it as many times as you want. Uh, is for you to do what you want. And if you want to use SSM, SSML, uh, you can also pass very similarly uh, as a text file. Customers, uh, of course, have jumped into it. And how many of you are using Duolingo to learn languages? All right, so some of you. Uh, Duolingo is an app that you can put in your phone. Uh, you can learn languages with it. And some of those languages are powered by Poly, uh, so that, uh, I mean, I didn't even know before. Uh, it quite blows my mind, to be honest. Uh, and another customer, uh, which is an organization in the UK uh, for uh, supporting uh, blind people uh, that are using that is using Poly to uh, uh, to uh, create uh, audiobooks, right, so that they can uh, at the library uh, use uh, use those books as well. The Washington Post do something quite funny as well. Uh, when they add an article uh, automatically to their website, it actually calls Poly through a Lambda function uh, and then uh, returns an icon on the, on, on, on the website so that you can listen to the article using Poly. Uh, I'll show you a demo, a quick demo of Poly. Uh, this is like this. There's a bunch of languages here, uh, of course. It does support uh, uh, German. There's three languages. Let's use Marlin. Hallo, mein Name ist Marlene. Ich werde jeden Text vorlesen, den Sie eingeben. I have no clue if she was right, but it sounded German to me. <laughs> Uh, there's a bunch of uh, other languages. I've always, uh, I love Iceland, so uh, I like to demo the Icelandic language. Ég heiti Dóra. Ég les upphátt allan texta sem þú skrifar hér. I have no clue as well, but sounds great. If you haven't been to Iceland, you should definitely go. It's a fabulous place. Um, yeah, you can, of course, uh, put the uh, SSML here as well. All right, so very simple service to use. Uh, really, uh, uh, one line of code as well can improve your application, or just you know generate uh, simply podcast out of your website. Something that uh, is happening a lot nowadays. One of the new services called Amazon Translate, and this, uh, as you may have guessed, actually is not on preview anymore. It's been GA two days ago, I think, uh, three days ago. Uh, so definitely, my slide is not up to date. My bad. Ooh. Yeah, he's the master of, uh, of AI, so I'm fired tonight. Hopefully, that's mistakes today as well. So <laughs> We always do mistakes. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell Ian. He's our boss. He's here today. 
uh, Amazon Translate, <laughs> uh, you give up uh, a word, uh, uh, some, some sentence, and it will translate that. I translate it in French because I'm half French, half English, and living in Finland. So uh, this is really uh, interesting, uh, but I'll show you the demo in, uh, in, in German because I think it's, it's funny. So if you say, hey, how are you? Wie geht's dir? You can uh, you can also say, and this is a bit different, right? That is loss. Is that correct? Would you say something like that? If you're a teenager, I was told, right? Yeah, you're not a teenager. You want to be cool, right? You're like big gets. It's cool. Uh, you can select your language, of course, uh, if you want to do this in Chinese. Is there any Chinese here? Is that correct? Nice. Live demos. Is there Arabic? Is that correct? Arabic here? No. Ah, cool. Uh, we support a bunch of uh, of different languages. It's language pairs that I supported. So uh, if you start from German. Oh dear, I won't do that. <laughs> Unsupported pair. Uh, German to English, that's what you can do. Uh, obviously, you can't translate that. Let's keep it when the demo works. <laughs> uh, today is misery because we do demo all day. Usually, everything, there's always a moment where things fail, right? So just don't worry. The, the, the system is powered by AI, of course. There's a, a understanding of the context is the most important. And you'll probably hear today uh, from Julian, but uh, Poly is, is uh, LSTM, so long short term memory uh, kind of. Uh, deep neural network that allows to understand context. So it's a, a neural network that has memory so that you can, uh, you can do uh, context understanding. And this is powered by that. And the API, again, very simple. Uh, you just simulate to the other APIs on the AI servers. You pass your text either uh, uh, directly as a reference or in a text as well. All right? And then it's context awareness. Interestingly, Hotels.com started to use that to you know, automatically add some new uh, language to their website. So when a customer puts a review, they translate that in all the languages automatically. And so able to do that. Transcribe, which is also <coughs> in GA, second mistake today, uh, is, a, is a service that allows you to give audio, and then we uh, compute the text out of it. So you do text synthesization, OK? So that's kind of stuff. And supports multiple languages. Again, uh, interesting thing is that it supports timestamps, so that if you have videos and then you want to have subtitles, you can use that system to do a subtitling of videos. Again, it's a system that is asynchronous, so you'd give uh, a job. Uh, you go, you do the API, and you'll get the job ID that you can query after all. And Ring DNA uh, has added this in their sales tools to be able to understand what really happened in the sales conversation. So very often, when you do a, uh, uh, when you're on sales, the the salesperson tends to focus on the last three minutes of a maybe ten minute conversation. It can be a lot of uh, of good stuff before as well. And Systems like this allow you to extract the text from the, the conversation, and then you can use a tool like Comprehend, which allows you to extract meaning from that uh, text as well, so that you can have a, a better understanding of what really the conversation was. And that's exactly what Ring DNA is doing. And they, also, they use Comprehend to extract meaning from, from text. So Comprehend allows you to send a text, and then it will return you a set of uh, uh, insight from the, the text, like things like entities, key phrases, languages, and sentiment analysis. Right? Uh, it supports also topic modeling. So if you have large collections of documents that is stored into S3, you can pass this as a reference. Again, a synchronous job, and we'll extract all the topics from your documents that are stored into S3. This is very good if you have archives and you want to understand and extract meaning from this, uh, these files right? and, and give them uh, uh, some topics. I'll do the demo. This is cool. Uh, here I went to uh, uh, just on the internet. 
uh, hap, uh, happy news. I talk, uh, uh, slashed on Google, uh, searched on Google, and got that, and just pasted the text. Uh, you can analyze, as you see, uh, the analysis returns you a set of entities. So some location entities. There are some uh, two locations here in Wellington and Charlotte. Some persons that are involved, and then some quantities. First flight, quantity, uh, things like this. Uh, you can, of course, show all this. Um, and also returns you what are the key phrases, so that you can try to understand what is happening there, and the language, of course. But then the sentiment here, and you see uh, it's neutral, 64%. And just to give you an idea, I know it's cheesy, uh, but you see it returns you confidence index with positive 99%. Maybe you think some might be lying. I'm doing also well this one. So let's see if exclamation point, yeah. See, 99. So it's very interesting because uh, the the fact that you had punctuation make this a, a bigger statement. It's cool. Um, what I wanted to 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 do. This is the API. They're cool. Um, what what customers like uh, Clearview Social is doing is they are using Comprehend to extract meaning from tweets that you're putting. So a lot of people put uh, 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 information uh, on social medias. Not necessarily Twitter or Facebook or stuff like this, but sometimes the internal social medias as well uh, for companies, and they forget to tag. So they use Comprehend to automatically text that people push online and add, for example, the uh, entities in the tags so that people then can have uh, more important, uh, interesting search. And they figure out that actually allows people to uh, then search back into the information that's been published in their channels much, much better. And the Washington Post is using Comprehend to understand what you put uh, in, in, in comments, uh, of course, uh, so that it allows them to uh, understand the topics and the, the, the sentiment of maybe comments online. And uh, sorry, uh, uh, one more use case as well. Uh, Hotels.com use Comprehend to um, allow hotels to figure out if there was a very, very negative review very fast and give them attention. So if, if there is a very negative review on a hotel, you want the hotel to, uh, to very, very fast act so that it doesn't go viral. And then so they use Comprehend to understand if a, a review is very, very negative, and then they have a, a, a fast channel to the hotels so that they, they can act. And then it turns this into a more positive story so that you don't have very negative uh, reviews online. Amazon Lex, you're going to have a full uh, session on how to build uh, chatbots with uh, X. But Lex is the engine initially that was uh, built uh, under Alexa. Now it's uh, uh, been moved into a whole uh, kind of life on its own. Uh, Amazon Lex is, uh, is now uh, a full-blown service that allows you to do chatbots. Very simple uh, as well. Uh, if you go into the console and you go um, to, let's go Le um, uh, Lex, you have lots of demos on how to uh, get started building, for example, uh, um, you know, different kind of chatbot, custom, book a trip. So if I want to book a trip chatbot, uh, you can yeah, just say yes to everything without reading. It just wants me not to be a children, which I'm not. And then you can, you know, write out of the box, uh, have a, a, an engine that is uh, get you started on how to build a chatbot to book a car, for example. And this is already building, uh, building the stuff uh, automatically, and then you can publish. So very, very easy to start. You can alter, you can create more. But what you have to understand, there's a couple of things that are important here, intent, slots. And those intents are what you're trying to do, and that's also a catchphrase for, uh, uh, for understanding what's going to be your utterance. So your utterance is going to be uh, what the user is going to type to start the chatbot. So I, I want to make a car reservation, and this is your utterance, right? so that you, you can start uh, doing that. So very, uh, uh, very interesting uh, service to use, and NASA is start has used that services to build a conversational interface with their robots on Mars so that for children, right? So that children can learn about Mars uh, and talk to Rovi uh, as it's discovering Mars. Very interesting, cool, cool stuff. 
Capital One uh, has used Alexa and Lex to uh, to add conversational interface to their websites and also to uh, Alexa, so you can interface with your bank accounts and your bank through conversation A. Uh, Capital One, how much do I have in my bank account? Nothing. Thank you. Thank you. And that's usually what happens. Uh, <laughs> insurance companies also uh, start to use uh, Lex. Uh, uh, especially Liberty Mutual, so that you can interface with insurance and say you want just to hey, uh, Liberty Mutual, what what kind of insurance uh, should I need for uh, for my car or for my home, and then you can start discussing that instead of searching on the website. Uh, so it's a new way to interact uh, with services, and people think it's gonna uh, be be really cool, which I believe as well. So we've run through some of those services. Now let's go a little bit down the rabbit hole and. Uh, initially, in this platform services, this is really for people that uh, start to reach the limit of the API service. As I said, they are all, all the API uh, AI services are built on general purpose data, uh, and that means that you will eventually uh, find some limits if you push it, uh, especially to, to uh, trying to recognize some of your own things. Uh, so you want to uh, move down the stack. And Initially, there was a, a few ways to do that. Amazon EMR was the first kind of service that allowed you to uh, use uh, MapReduce framework, Elastic MapReduce framework, uh, to you know, build uh, uh, ML, and especially one of libraries, the Spark uh, MLlib, which is uh, uh, having a very, uh, very large set of algorithms to do from very uh, standard uh, binary classification statistics to uh, more clustering and then uh, dimensional reductions. So depending on what you want to do, you can uh, use that. But uh, customers have uh, I've, I've used and still using EMR a lot. Uh, and one of the, those customers is Zylo. Zylo is a company in the US that uh, in three years totally changed the way for uh, the housing market. Right? They came with a new ID, an ID that uh, customers should uh, be in charge of, uh, of, their, uh, of their homes and the part of selling their homes. So what they've done is they've indexed the entire set of, uh, of the sales of houses in the US per regions and combined a lot of different data sets so that they can build a recommendation uh, engine to price a house. Uh, so they, uh, as a customer, you go there, you upload your photos, you put the characteristic of your house, uh, where it is, location, all this kind of stuff, and then the Zylo will give you what they call a Zestimate on the price of the house. And actually, that price has become the default standard now in the US to price a house. It's been that accurate. Right? And they've totally changed the way uh, the housing market works. And just in a few years, so just with uh, machine learning and AI technology. So power out your fingertips, my friends. Another service which was uh, uh, relaun uh, launched at GA and that Julian uh, both will talk about and, and fell in love with, and also Randall loves uh, SageMaker. Randall is here, Jim is here. Uh, is Amazon SageMaker, and to be honest, there's a good reason why you would like that service. Uh, it allows you to create an end-to-end -end solution for machine learning, and end-to-end an -end, uh, with zero setup, and then you pay on demand. And what you can do is really start building, um, creating your, and your training pipeline, and then deploying. And all of those uh, uh, are independent of each other, so you can just build a, a, a AI pipeline if you want. You can just train your networks, and then you can create an endpoint. And especially, I think, what is phenomenal with SageMaker is it takes the deploying of a, mach of a model, machine learning uh, AI model, a very, very simple one line of code. You can create an endpoint, an API endpoint. And we take care on the hood of scaling that model and scaling the delivery of that model to, AP to the API. And Traditionally, it was very, very difficult to serve models, right? Uh, usually, you have data scientists creating models, and then someone tries to build an API in front of it, and it's very, very difficult. So now SageMaker takes, takes part of that. And under the hood, it supports all kind of frameworks from MXNet, TensorFlow, Cafe, Glue, and uh, PyTorch, and uh, supports also Gluon, which is a, a, a cool API, high-level API on top of different frameworks. And customers like Digital Club, which Julian will talk about, and, and 
Hotels.com are now using SageMaker for their AI pipeline for good reasons. Now, if you go, I'll, I'll show you quickly, actually, SageMaker here. SageMaker, you're, uh, you go into uh, the service. Uh, here I'm in Oregon. And you can create a notebook instance. Uh, a notebook instance is just an instance uh, which will run Jupyter Notebook. Uh, Jupyter Notebook is kind of a, a very cool way to write uh, documentation and execute code at the same time. Here I have a bunch of instances. And you see, you can just click Open, and it will uh, take you here. And then this is by default. You have a bunch of uh, sample notebooks. And some of the notebooks here, they come uh, with uh, all the uh, uh, Amazon algorithm, some that we've built uh, that are we are using in-house for Amazon, and we give them uh, as a Jupyter notebook. So for example, if you want to do uh, topic modeling, you can uh, launch the notebook, LDA introduction, and then you can follow step by step what is happening, and you know this is the code how to write that. Right? So uh, you can really follow, and this is quite quite nice because it gives you a very easy way to start to get your hands dirty on different kind of uh, uh, notebooks. And there's some very advanced notebooks. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to do advanced functionality here, uh, and you want to do 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 came distribution, data distribution tires right here, you can do that. And these are really, really advanced, right? And we, we, Julian will talk more about this in his session. He has a full session dedicated at the end to SageMaker. So if you are into kind of getting your hands dirty and wanting to learn, definitely go to that session. And then, of course, you can go down, uh, down the rabbit hole. So this is for people that really want to uh, manage their own infrastructure and frameworks. And we give you a bunch of, uh, of tools for that. The first, of course, we give you instances uh, to run your ML, uh, uh, an AI pipeline. You know, the, as I said, AI is like 70-year-old technology. The big problem of AI, and, and especially building models, is computation. Right? So uh, there's a, a problem called the curse of dimensionality that says the bigger your network, the more uh, computation and data you need. Right? And so we give you quite uh, some performance uh, instances to build your, uh, your instances. And the EC2 P3 instances uh, has about one petaflop of computational performance, which is pretty ridiculous, uh, uh, so to say. So you can, uh, you can really use the, those to start building your own models. And I think uh, uh, Randall's model, if you have using the bot where ML has been using the P3 instance to, uh, uh, to train your model for nine days, right? P2, oh, that was a P2 instance. All right, so. Yeah, so P2 took uh, uh, nine days and on P3 a uh, few hours. That's how fast uh, it is. And we also give you access to what we call a deep learning AMI. And this is an AMI that you can launch in the marketplace. I'll show you directly. A lot of people don't necessarily know what I'm saying when I say marketplace. You go into EC2. Of course, if you want to go to a marketplace, you need first to go to EC2. Makes sense, right? Right, and then you want to launch an instance, and here you can go to the marketplace, and here you can type deep learning, and you'll see there are a bunch of uh, of instances, and one of those which has the wrong Amazon logo, uh, you can uh, start launching, and these instances come pre-baked with a bunch of uh, of uh, frameworks. They come with TensorFlow, MXNet. Uh, the uh, Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit, PyTorch Cafe, all, all of those, you name it, you can have them. And traditionally, it's been very, very difficult, actually, to install those frameworks. So that's why this is a very good way to get started. So you can just launch that instance, SSH into it, and then uh, start using Jupyter Notebooks again. And there are some pre-installed there, uh, so you can start uh, playing with the different frameworks. And customers, of course, are starting to use this. But this is really like if you have data scientists at home, or even if you're interested in learning, this is one way I started to learn about AI, is just starting the deep learning framework, uh, deep learning AI, uh, AMI, and then going to the frameworks, trying to see what are the examples. And there are tutorials. Actually, the AI world is probably the uh, nicest world in terms of sharing resources. and. Uh, 
They even share pre-trained models that you can use and tune for your own stuff. And you probably learned about it today. And customers have started to use that uh, deep uh, AI. This is a customer called Archeris, which is building a system to recognize blood flows in the body. And they use MRI uh, images combined with, uh, with AI to understand how the blood flow uh, goes through the organs and allows uh, uh, doctors to diagnose much uh, faster uh, cardiovascular diseases. Right? And of course, as I say, Netflix. Netflix is also uh, that uh, that good that they do everything by hand, and they have their own uh, deep learning uh, uh, frameworks that they deploy and train on the P3 instances now. And if you uh, know, uh, if you use, how many of you use Netflix? This is a quick quick review. There's a, a lot of different services like My List. Uh, what you might like, what people that have seen this movie might like, all those actually recommendation engines that are powered by AI models, right? And they all are microservices, so they all have uh, uh, their own endpoints as well. And they build on the, uh, Netflix is 100% on AWS, and they all build their AI on, on top of the P3 instances, P2 and P3. And of course, the last on the uh, on the infrastructure level is a new toy that we launched at reInvent called DeepLens. I don't have mine here. I'm not sure if the guys have one of those, but this is a, a, a tool very similar to what you would do with Raspberry Pi, uh, but it has a camera embedded into it and uh, runs Greengrass, uh, which is our uh, IoT uh, framework. And you can do deployments of model uh, that you train in the cloud and deploy them directly at the edge. And this is a very cool way to uh, uh, first to learn and to play with, uh, with AI and the idea of having AI at the edge, which is if you, uh, if you want to be at the forefront of technological development, you should definitely go there. This is where all the autonomous driving cars are going, having embedded IoT devices in the cars or in everywhere, which run models. Right? Uh, so the models are not run in the cloud. They are trained in the cloud, deployed at the edge. because. You want to have as fast inference as possible. You cannot afford to have latency for inference in the cloud. You want to have inference at the edge. And this is a good way to get started. And then another project is called the Amazon ML Lab, which uh, gives you directly access to machine learning expertise in-house. Okay? And this is a project that we launch uh, for uh, customers that want to start to do uh, AI and ML, but do not have expertise in houses. Right? So we bring uh, our Amazon experts to your, uh, to your company, and we do some brainstorming. We help you uh, define your AI pipeline, run, uh, build and run your modeling pipeline, and of course, uh, do some teaching for, for the crowds. And there's been a bunch of customers that, of course, started to jump on that uh, uh, occasion. And on that, uh, just want to run the summary. Now you have the entire set of technology to really uh, start building your AI pipeline, build the models, and train them uh, in the cloud. Do inference in the cloud if you wish, and this is you know 90% of the use cases currently are like this. But you also have now the capability. There's a new service or the upgrade of the service Greengrass called Greengrass ML now that it's been launched that allows you to do this one-click deployment of model at the edge on IoT devices, and this is really uh, supporting the entire uh, build and deploy pipeline for your infrastructure. So. We went through quite a bit here. Right? Um, just a summary. Uh, if you get started, uh, that's the, the, the first thing. How many of you just get started with AI currently? Just to give you a heads up. Uh, cool, so it's like 20, 30% of people. Go start with application services, right? the API. Figure out what are the, uh, the use cases and how you push the, uh, the boundaries of, uh, of the services. You will eventually uh, move, push the, the, this barrier, right? Because you eventually want to customize. So then, really start to move down the rabbit hole and go on the, the platform services. And I recommend to start actually SageMaker. Uh, SageMaker deploy an instance, log in. There are tons of Jupyter notebooks, and we are adding many of them uh, regularly or updating it. 
And those algorithms we claim are top of the art, right? They are sometimes 10 times better than currently published. So have a look at those for, uh, and then there are also a lot of people publishing on GitHub some of those uh, training for SageMaker. And then start, you know, maybe have a look at EMR. In my opinion, EMR uh, is great, but it's a bit more complicated because you need to understand the uh, MapReduce framework and Spark frameworks before starting to do uh, AI, which can be a bit confusing. And then if you're, of course, interested into the idea of having AI at the edge, play, have a look with DeepLens. Now you're going to say, where can I get DeepLens? Well, you can't currently. Uh, unfortunately, this is a big, uh, the big issue when we talk about stuff like this in Europe. Uh, they will be on pre-sales in April, I suppose, uh, so this month in the US, and then uh, shipped uh, throughout the year. And I don't have a date for Germany, so I'm sorry. Uh, you, you will have to uh, hack your way through the US. And then you can go down uh, once you push the limit of SageMaker, you know, go down on deep learning AMI. On even actually, you can start at the same time. Deep learning AMI, they're still very, very interesting things, especially if you uh, want to understand all the different frameworks. And these are all the frameworks supported by the deep learning AMI, so you don't have to install and configure them yourself. Do yourself a favor, never try to do this uh, uh, because it's a pain in the ass. Right? Uh, so we do this for you. On that note, uh, really go build. I don't have more to say. I think I've said a lot. I'm happy to uh, uh, answer questions uh, if you have any, and I'm sure you have. Hopefully, you do. And hopefully, not hard questions because I'm recorded. <laughs> awesome. Great, exactly the kind of questions I was hoping to get today. Uh, do you have a release date? I don't. Uh, and w I actually have no clue of the roadmap. There are 120 services at Amazon, and I, I haven't managed to find a way to keep roadmaps of all those. I'm sorry we don't have support for German on Lex currently, uh, and we are not, we're not in Frankfurt. I thought there was, but maybe not. Okay, so I don't have a date, unfortunately, I'm sorry. But actually, I have a good recommendation. You see this man here? He is called Randall. Randall is, uh, uh, is part of the uh, evangelist team as well, and he's super active on Twitter. And if you want to yell on Twitter, yell at him. <laughs> because he's, uh, he's writing blogs, and he's sitting very close to the service team, so he can, he can give feedback. So do, do yell uh, to Randall. So actually, it's a very good question. I got that question last week as well. I do not know any way of doing that, and I don't think there's any uh, uh, roadmaps or anything. What I strongly suggest, because I thought it, I think it's a cool idea, is to give feedbacks to the service teams uh, in terms of oh, uh, we would really like to be able to access uh, those. Now, as I said, are the API services are general purpose built that we maintain. And we do the hard work. Uh, we so you will find some limits. And this is why we go into SageMaker. And what I recommend is uh, on SageMaker, or actually, if you want to do custom model, just go on what we call the, the model zoos. Right? So model zoos are a place where people publish their uh, pre-built models. And then you can do uh, transfer, transfer learning, which is a technique that you take a, a, a general purpose model or a, a model that was built by someone else that did the, all, all the hard work, but you just tune the parameters to, for, for your workloads. And customers like Expedia, for example, they, they do this for their hotels. So they analyze, they use the ImageNet uh, uh, models, pre-trained model, uh, I think is ResNet, and then they um, they tune it for their, uh, for their own services uh, to recognize good and bad images in hotels so that when you go onto the hotel, you don't see the image of a toilet initially. You see a cool pool, a beautiful image that gives you a sense of, oh, this hotel is great. 
Uh, and this is the kind of things that they use. And they use this transfer learning, right? They don't build the model themselves. They don't have the uh, people in house to 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 do that. And uh, to be honest, it would take a longer time to build a model from scratch. But they take a pre-trained model from a zoo, download it, and then tune the parameters. And this is very cool technique, which is 99%. I would say 90% of the case that uh, that we deal with customers actually start to uh, move into transfer learning. So I would do something like this. But nonetheless, your ID is great. So do give feedbacks to the service team that you would like to uh, be able to have access to some of those uh, video streams, audio streams. Cool. Any other questions? Cool. I'm giving you back five minutes of your life uh, until we uh, transfer to, uh, to Julian, I think, for the introduction to deep learning, theory, use case, and tools. All right, thank you very much.